going to have a quick discussion on this uh, 8.2 problems involving drive friction. Um, so what you see here is you see this, this heading, it says types of friction problems. And essentially, uh, if you can wrap your, your mind around this, then you can solve almost any problem. Um, types of friction problems. The first is no apparent impending motion. Okay, so don't worry about whatever the structure is. The point is that if you know that your, your, your body, your object, whatever it is, <clears throat> there's no apparent pending motion, then if you recall what I mentioned before, if there's no apparent, no apparent pending motion, then we can only we can only, only use our equilibrium equations. That means if, we, if we've got some whatever, some, some structure there, and there's no apparent pending motion, what does that mean? It means that when we are looking at our frictional force and applied force graph, remember this thing that looks like that, and then it breaks off there, and we've got, this is our limiting static frictional equation, That's uh, and that is given by Fs equals mu Sn, right? If we are not at a parent, uh, at pending motion, that's, sorry, this should be impending, sorry. No apparent impending motion, that's what I meant. So this point is where we are at impending motion. If we are to the left of that point, right, if we are anywhere there, then it means that all we are able to use are our e equilibrium equations. That's the sum of the e sum of fx in uh, forces in the x equals zero, sum of the forces in the y equals zero, sum of the moments about some point equals zero. Okay? So we are only allowed to use the equilibrium equations because we're not there. That, that equation only applies to when we are at impending motion. When we are at impending motion, we can use that. Okay? Um, although I said this, the, the one thing that we, we do do is once we have solved for our frictional force, we compare it with this value here. Okay, so say now we've got our frictional force and using these three equations we solve for frictional force. Frictional force is just like any other unknown force. We're, we're, we're not at apparent impending motion. Um, we are not at this point. We know we're somewhere down here. Um, then we, we solve for our friction force just like we would solve any other force and then we compare it. Okay, we compare it with um, our Fs. Okay, just to make sure that we we are indeed not at impending motion. Okay, the second one, the second one here is impending motion at all points of contact. Impending motion at all points of contact. So again, can you see that this is a this is a, a body which has more than one point of contact, more than one point of contact. Okay, so. Impending motion at all points, at all points of contact. That means that all the points, all the points are at this point, are at impending motion. Okay? So that means that we can use some of the forces in the x equals zero, or our equilibrium equations, some of the moments, plus plus Fs equals mu S, N. Okay, because we're, we're there. So we use all our equations, our equilibrium equations, plus we, we can use the limiting static frictional equation. For, for all the points, by the way, that is for every point. It will be for that point, it will be for that point. Okay? I hope that's clear. The third one... <clears throat> Impending motion at some points of contact. Okay? Impending motion at some points. Okay? 
So what does that mean? It means that this, say now this structure falls down. It slips, right? <clears throat> well, what we, what we have to analyze is, <clears throat> I guess maybe that's not the best way of explaining it. Maybe the best way to explain it is we need to ask ourselves, where is it going to slip first? Okay? So, impending motion at some points of contact, we, the way we would uh, um, approach this problem is we would assume, okay guys, we would assume it's slipping at one point and not slipping at that point. And we would solve our problem. Then we would, the next case or ne next scenario, we would assume it's slipping at the other point and not at that point. And we would solve our problem. And then we would compare the results from the two, the two cases. So uh, how, how do I explain this? We, we make assumptions. Okay, so say now, so we assume slipping at one point and not at the other. And then vice versa. Okay, so, so say now we're trying to find out what is the force, what is the what is the weight needed, for example, I don't know, in order to make this slip, but we don't know which one will, where it'll slip first. So we assume it'll slip at the one and not at the other one, and then we solve. And then the second case is we assume it'll slip at that one and not the other one, and we solve, okay? I'll do an example to illustrate illustrate these things. But but essentially, these are the, th the three kinds of problems that we, that we uh, will face. And as long as we know how to how to approach it, as long as we know where we are in this graph, then we'll be able to um, solve any problem. If we are not there, but we're to the, this side of the, of the curve, then we can only use equilibrium equations. If we are at that point, we can use equilibrium equations plus our static frictional force. And if some points are there and some points aren't, we, we're not sure. We make assumptions by saying that point is there and that point is not, or that point is there and that point is not. So I hope that just gives you a quick overview of, of how to solve these problems. And I will do, uh, in the next video, I will do a problem on impending motion at some points.